uh, we were just discussing like do we have the legs can we at least try to sprint with the railways and the other girls we like yeah sure so we all started sprinting and boom there was a crash right in front of me i was like in the front i literally i never knew i had such great bike handling skills okay i literally bunny hopped on the right wow. i was like did i just do it <laughs> I, was like, wow. I was like and then abhi akha got scared and she was like nandini are you okay i was like i'm fine i was just like go 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 you might think oh we are wasting so much of i wouldn't say wasting it's a wrong word we're investing so much of money on this when the friends of our own age are taking vacations and their money is going into much more things but at the end it's your personal happiness if you can go back to sleep happy thinking oh i did this it gives you happiness and you wake up wanting to do it again then that's your answer i am baiki winki and this is the working athlete podcast Here I talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various sports to provide you with inspiration training tips time management and lifestyle advice If this is something that interests you please make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future episodes Today's guest Nandini Sharma is a doctor by profession and a rider who represented Tamil Nadu at Indian Cycling Nationals Her journey in endurance sports started with using running and cycling as stress busters while in medical college. She pursued triathlon for a few years and has completed half iron and full iron distance triathlons as well. Now while pursuing a demanding career as a doctor, she is focusing on just cycling with aspirations of medaling at the nationals. In this episode we talked about her endurance journey and how she is managing training towards nationals while working as a full-time doctor. Now let us get into my conversation with Dr. Nandini. Welcome to the Working Athlete podcast Nandini. Thank you so much Baiki. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you here. Same here. I was so excited for this. Like we spoke about it like really long back and I was like <laughs> I'll let you know when I'm coming to Bangalore. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Yes. So Nandini, let us start by talking about mm-hmm. uh, your work okay. right now. Okay. So right now, uh, like I'm working with a hospital called as Promed. It's in Tiruvannamalai in Chennai. Uh, it's mainly a cardiac hospital, but then there are departments of like ER and everything else in a smaller basis. But yeah, we all like. all the departments are there like in small small bits so i take care of the emergency basically and if sometimes emergency is like little free i go for ip as well like helping out my friends colleagues there uh emergency like we all know it's kind of a tricky business and it's like you know you have shift timings like you have a time to go but then you don't have a time to come back it's always like that and you're like always on call like say if there is a poly trauma or if there are two to three sick cases our hospital is like a small hospital it's just 50 bedded so we have like one doctor per shift so if sometimes it's too crowded they like hello you have to come back like fine okay coming back <laughs> so it's always like that now it's little okay but covid times i joined the hospital last year may it's almost going to be an year now Mm. that was hectic like covid times we knew like i remember the longest shifts we did was like 18 hours in the pp kits and there was like horrible but then that that's what we're supposed to do so now it's better like covid is gone we can like loudly clearly say yeah covid is not there anymore it's just on a very lower rate it's de- now the things are very decent like just some accident or some injury or like sudden things which we just our job is to like restore them and send it over to like ip right. so yeah that's pretty much about my job right now awesome awesome so that is your job now let us go back and talk about um the sport mm-hmm. aspect so Uh, did you do any sports as a kid in school college and stuff like that okay uh, so on a serious business no i studied in kendra vidyalaya throughout so it's more of fun than education we all know uh, my dad was in central government he was in indian air force that's how i landed in kv because it's were easier when we move around and you know you can just stick to the same pattern as a kid like uh till fifth sixth standard no sports and then when i came to kv sulur my dad was posted in sulur for a while i 
the coach was really good the basketball coach and he was like hey you should try that's how i slowly started playing like i played basketball for a couple of years and i started liking it and then i did like small school matches and inter school matches that's about it and then 10th education then like 12th my parents were like you have to do medicine you like i'm so i'm the first daughter in my family they're like you have to be a doctor so things changed but like then onwards i started playing like we would play like sometimes basketball sometimes hockey so it was that and then i joined my med school everything was shut for one and a half year it was really hard the first one and a half year uh like on a serious note like i never played any team sport team sport as such other than the school whatever thoda bahut and uh, so after joining my med school when like things were getting too hectic and the pressure was too much i did not know where to vent it out uh that's when like all of this happened like uh, my dad being in defense he is a very fit person he loves sports and all so he always would go for like long runs he's a ultra marathon runner and he's a triathlete so he would go on runs and i was discussing so my dad is my best friend okay i discuss everything so i was discussing this with him one day i was like papa i don't know something i don't know something i had put on lot of weight like really lot of weight. i used to look like a ball so i was like i don't know what something is off then he was like you know what you should like i know it's really hard for you you have to leave house by 7 but come for a smaller run or something like come out of the house you're literally not coming out of the house anymore i said okay so the first day he he was like i went on a cycle with him because i couldn't keep up with his run pace I was like I liked it you know that morning fresh air you your mind gets free you are like in a better version and all that I started doing that and then I started like I it was okay for me and then my dad was like you know enough cycling with me come start running I was like okay so me and dad started running and then I have a younger brother Aditya he would come on cycle he was like really small so he'll come along with us just for fun so that's how it started the thing was I started with endurance it was a I wouldn't say wrong footstep but because my dad was doing that I did not know any better so I started doing endurance first and that's how it all started mm, so yeah. which year was this this was I think 2014 2014 14, yeah right. 2014 nice nice so <clears throat> first you joined him on a bike and yeah. then you started joining him on on foot on yeah. for the runs and uh, your brother tagged along yeah. and stuff so from there on how did it kind of progress what were the things that how much were you running or cycling mm-hmm. um, per week or how how did yeah. it progress from there so back then it was like very haphazard it was all over the place like uh if i could get to run once or twice a week like say 4 5 kilometers i would be happy because studies were pretty hectic yeah. so everything was like on and off on and off on and off i used to do a, like because i started running and we had this group of vibrant velocheri like part of chennai runners and everything so there were all these small small events which were happening they were like come 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 10k chuma panikla like okay fine 10k so we all enroll and then we'll go run and walk and all this started happening but on like proper a training for a run or a, like half marathon i think i did it in 2015 or 16 i don't remember exactly that was the aroville uh, half marathon mm. which i like properly trained and did like after like i trained for 6 months and i could like do it in like 2 hours 12 minutes or something it's not great but that was like oh, i did it in 2 hours 12 minutes like so that was my proper run like right. after that i did one full marathon and that was about it i was done with running because it was very monotonous for me like just constantly running 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 don't know like to achieve what mm. and that's about the running story and then then was that time i think around 2015 16 when ctc peter uh, started bringing triathlon into like chennai community it was like new fancy thing like there's a combination of a lot of things so you can neutralize like what you're good at and bad at and then combine it so my dad started training for it and uh my swimming is horrible i never thought i would do that my dad was like you should try it it's fun probably like it breaks the mono- monotonous uh, thing of like Just one single oh uh, yeah. yeah i was like okay but then i was still scared of run <laughs> swimming i was like no no so i remember there was this first event of theirs where i registered myself for s- sprint and my dad was doing half iron distance uh Peter was like, "Come on, okay, it's time to go. We'll start swimming." It was in the quarry somewhere outside Chennai, 
and i was just looking there i did not know what to do i had like practice swimming but still open water i was like i went to peter and i was like peter if you, would you mind if i just not swim and just do <laughs> cycling and running and go he's like okay fine you do that but then i'll give you like a duathlon thingy i was like i'm happy i'll do that like it was twice that i did not swim and then i just did these two things and i came off but i felt really guilty it's like oh what could be the big deal about swimming why am i not doing it like people they know they know us right like it's a smaller community they look at me i would have registered for triathlon but then i would not do it i'll just do this get a triathlon medal and come back that was not nice that's when i decided no i have to like learn swimming and all that so we stay in velacheri the aquatic complex is pretty close by um I started making sure that I learn swimming properly so I'll get down from college bus papa would be home and then he'll take me to swimming and I learn I learn with it is like for 3 4 months and then I was like oh now I'm perfect and I was like I should have had some guts okay I was like I'm ready now I'm going to do full ironman distance registered myself <laughs> for that <laughs> so that's how the whole thing came up right it was But, like funny uh, journey yeah it is so uh, during all this mm-hmm. you know because you got into this mm-hmm. to because you were not feeling uh, all right yeah. you know just studying yeah. and then you also mentioned that you put on weight and mm-hmm. stuff so uh, how did all doing all this mm-hmm. help you uh, you know manage your weight and uh, you know all all that mental space mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, getting into a good mental space and stuff Yeah. So that actually helped me a lot. Basically like I'm I'm a very happy person. Like I want to be happy. That's my major goal. Like as a child when if somebody would want like ask you what do you want to like be like when you grow up? I like I want to be happy and I want to roam around. <laughs> That's what I will say. I'll not say teacher, doctor or anything. My dad will like yo, he'll say all the time. So like uh when I started doing all this I was definitely physically tired. I used to sleep in bus while going, coming back. like that was my power naps i would say but in college i was more attentive things which took me time to like i had to read them 3 4 times to understand my brain was much more fresher i would ab- absorb it pretty quickly and uh, my uh, reactivity like spontaneous thinking had improved i don't know if people believe in that but it really worked for me like i my oxygen supply to my brain was faster i would say <laughs> yeah right. so that way and i would get lesser frustration like if uh, like if we were supposed to do any practicals or anything in anatomy like i wouldn't get it the first second time i would really get angry i would have anger issues like you know why is this not happening what what the hell and all that but once i started doing all physical activities and more exposure to a lot more new people it made me calm like you know it's like a positive energy like i could channelize my energy properly that was there for sure like and i would remember things longer that mm. was there like for exams and all it was not that hard like i would study i would understand and it would be there in my brain i won't go blank which was happening before like that was a pressure right like yeah. so once i had something to vent out my pressure things stayed back right. yeah it was easier to study oh definitely yeah. oh super so um Uh, for uh, something like medicine it mm-hmm. is very important to kind of memorize stuff yeah. a lot of uh, you know what uh, uh, treatment for what diseases yeah, and all yeah. that because i i know uh, my uh, niece mm-hmm. uh, was studying medicine okay. so i i knew what all she has to mm-hmm. kind of you know yeah. big big books it's and it's really you know, hard this is a lot and yeah, all yeah, yeah. so big books such big books and so much to study mm-hmm. she was like on the books all the time yeah. so <laughs> i know what you mean so so that helped uh, you focus during that more, focus yeah, ex- more especially right? during my exam times because in medicine in uh, like so we are mgr university affiliated my colleges for us the pattern was like how many number of subjects doesn't matter it will be in one go like i think that's how it's for all the medical school like you don't get in between leave for exams so it starts luckily if you get a sunday fine but if not then it's at a stretch so you really need to be prepared beforehand right or like uh, my uh, college was pretty far from my house like one way 22 km so like even if it's a university exam 9 to 12 like i'll come back home by 3 and i literally have only this much hours to like so it's only enough for revision hmm. so when i started working out and everything it helped me focus and 
like study much more conveniently i would say yeah. that was one great part yeah awesome awesome so now you uh, from not learn and learning to swim or being afraid of swimming mm-hmm. and you know signing up for triathlon to finishing duathlon yeah you went ahead and learned swimming yeah and then uh, went ahead uh, saying uh, no sprint and all that you just direct, uh, direct <laughs> direct, iron yeah. iron Nothing only do big things <laughs> <laughs> so i still am like uh, i wouldn't say scared of swimming i'm scared of water in gen- general like that's a big fear for me mm. till now mm. so for i all like since school i knew swimming but like i that taught me when we were young kids and all that but it was just that fear which i could not overcome at all uh so like uh, i learned and i did my swimming is like i would the timing is really bad still like i can't swim really fast i would do average swimming but this just the confidence my dad helped me a lot in that like he would say it's okay it's just water you're not going to drown and even if you're drowning people are there to save you you just have to lift one hand up and all that so yeah it took me a lot of courage and when i did my first Tri- triathlon full triathlon distance i literally was like twice i got so scared that i lifted my hand and there were people so like volunteers would come up and i say oh so they are there they help me <laughs> you were <laughs> testing us. exactly <laughs> okay i am i'll be safe no problem i can go ahead so like i uh, even in my uh, like uh, like whole that iron man distance and couple of other uh, thing i did not swim continuously ever like till now i haven't swam that distance i would take break and then do it but then uh, luckily my cycling and running were okay so i would compensate for that mm. i was like if i come out alive i'll do other things properly <laughs> <laughs> so that was the point yeah right so how how was that experience your first iron distance experience yeah how was the race itself mm-hmm. how did it go so because uh, it is uh, it's not a small distance yeah. right what 4 4 kilometers so plus so uh, 3.9 and 180 plus kilometer cycling and full marathon yeah, almost 42 running yeah 42 kilometers running 180 kilometers cycling yeah. so how did uh, how did you manage that how did the race itself go <laughs> now when i think of it, it was scary but back then it was fun Uh, so we it was in december in chennai we started early in the morning uh, like yeah so morning uh, we was like let in batches we i remember we were three girls me vinoli and akriti she used to be in bangalore before she's amazing runner though so we were there and all three of us were doing for the first time uh, we started with swimming it took me a really long time december chennai is fine like the mornings are pretty chill so we took our time did our swimming but by the time i came out because i hadn't experienced even half of it before like how it looks like to swim 4 kilometers i haven't done it cycling i have done like 200 brm so i knew how it would be mm. and running also i had done full marathon so by the time i came out i was like so exhausted my shoulders were hurting i couldn't feel my shoulders anymore but i was like it's okay then that papa helped me he gave me like some salt and everything i ate some breakfast and then we started cycling like took a nice time of 10 minutes for transition so called fast transition <laughs> and then we started so there's this bad patch of the road you have to come out only then you hit ecr uh, we do we did that and the winds were horrible like 180 km it's like a pretty long time like i took 7 hours or something to finish that we started in headwinds because it was in the afternoon so we were grind like we were going really hard grinding 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 and uh, me and my dad were uh, cycling together so i can't give him any draft so i was like he literally let me go with him for like 50 60 km till i could and then i started feeling better all the fuel i took like started working out and i was like now i can like lead for a while and then we were doing this doing this so it was like a loop of 90 we have to do two loops first loop went happily all good because return we got some tailwinds and when we are going for the second loops wind change because it's later in the evening oh, okay. again headwinds i was like what <laughs> again <laughs> we won't this stop and then i was telling my papa this 200 brm was also not this hard why is this so hard i can't do it i was telling him he was like it's okay you can and then like he was constantly pushing me volunteers because for them it was three women who were doing for the first time they were like of super support peter was like there all the time like girls you can do it come on come on come on and uh, so we did the cycling part 
I don't know how much water I drank in the cycling. It's not like how we do now. We know how to drink water. So if I'm stopping and drinking water, I'm drinking one bottle at one go, like gulp, 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 gulp. And then all that was happening, like constantly eating. And then came back, two rounds done, completely dead. I was like, I don't know if I can run, Papa. My legs are sore and all that. Uh, like, I remember back then, like in cycling, I was not sure of like what cadence and everything. We have to finish the distance. It was back in 2016. I, right. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I wasn't riding that seriously. So somehow finished the distance and started by walking for the run part. It was like already dark and it was like a eight kilometer loop where we had to constantly run around a village and there were volunteers all over like CTC volunteers. You don't even have to ask. They'll be there all the time. We were running, they were giving us ice sponging and it started becoming really humid because at the end of the day and near a water body, we all were rained. I could see everybody. I could see Akriti, who is a, like, who is amazing runner. She was sitting down there. I was like, oh, so she's tired too. It's just not me. Okay, fine. <laughs> we'll run together. And then there was Vinoli. Vinoli, uh, one part about like one really good thing about her is she will not stop. Like I would run fast and then I would stop. But she's like, if she's slow also, she'll be like constantly pushing, 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 pushing. So she was running. And then my dad was like, see, she's not giving up. We did not know each other much back then. We were new. She's like, so there's this woman who is not giving up. If you don't run, she's going to keep going and she'll finish first. I was like, oh, but there's no competition here, Papa. I was like, but still she'll finish first. You need to start running. I was like, well, in college, I was very young. So for me, somebody finishing ahead of me is like, no, no, I have to go too. Like he was pushing me. So we were running, walking, running, walking. I think little before midnight, we finished the event. What a relief it was. I was crying literally. And like whole of my group, my vibrant Velocity group had come down to cheer up. It was like they were having cake and all. That moment when everybody was seeing us at finish line, it was, oh, like all the effort has come to a result. Everybody's so happy. It felt worth at that moment. But when I was doing it, I was cursing myself. I was cursing my father. I was cursing everybody. <laughs> I was cursing God. <laughs> so yeah. yeah that's my journey of a full line questioning the yeah, purpose my existence. of existence yes, like, why why <laughs> my friends and all are watching movies it's a sunday why am i doing this to myself <laughs> or oh, literally cursing myself oh yeah. god things but, we do <laughs> yeah yeah but by the end of it it all, all you know matters, once it yeah. stops like what a relief and yeah you know, then there was sense like, of accomplishment exactly accomplishment in. happiness and then you think that section I could have gone a little faster. <laughs> it's always there, you know, even when you do ITTs now, that bit where you're like dying, but after when you analyze your thing and you're like, couldn't you faster po ikla? <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, awesome, awesome. So from there, you know, with all these uh, 200 BRMs, mm -hmm. with all these iron distance, triathlon and stuff like that, when did that, kind of transition into racing how, yeah. how did that thing come about okay uh so uh like i think in 2017 when i started my internship uh i could not do anything like internship was very hard like they put you in shifts night shifts everything again everything was to ground zero like did not know what to do so there was a break of around one and a half years i would not couldn't participate because they won't give you leave also like how they give you leave in colleges so there was a break and then when I started again, I, uh, there was, I have always been motivated by women doing like extraordinary things. So there was Padma Priya, there was this girl called Krutika Chidambaram. They were doing BRMs back, back then and they were doing this super randonneur thing and they were doing 1000 BRM. And my dad used to do BRM so I would always go to pick up and drop him and then I would see how they affiliated those females. My dad was like, do you want to try now that your internship is going to come to an end? I was like, how will it be? Like, is it hard? He's like, no, it back, it's not much because back then Partha, like the organizer would just do ECRs, like whatever distance, go and come back. So I said, sure, I would do it. And then um, that season in 2017, I did 200, I did 300. But I don't, uh, I think we were doing Javadu, like we were climbing up and coming down and I, my knee just snapped. Like there was really bad pain while getting down. And I don't know why. And I could not cycle after that and started swelling up. So mm. I had to quit in 300. And then I came back, checked with my doctors. I think there was small injury, some ligament tear, which has caused it. 
uh because like literally i was doing brms without any distance training like right. yeah just after my internship whenever i get time right little bit and go for the events so i had to take a nice breaks so that season went off again i tried <laughs> i did 200 300 and 400 i did but then for 600 my dad was not there he had to fly out for work so i did not do it alone mm. gone so two seasons wasted and uh, but, uh like my dad said like you can go to other city and do it if you want to but i think like, it's not that much of thing and all that and then the first uh, fletch uh, event like where you have to pair up and everything happened in chennai for 400 km that's what i did with the team like we had four riders from vibrant vale cherry and we did it so that gave me like oh i did 400 and then now i need to do a super because i think i was the only woman in all those teams who have completed so like i said oh this is one feather in my cap i want to get the brm feather too and then i started doing that so when i was doing training for brms and i was doing i think i did 2018 brm season where they made us go to tirupati for 600 that's the season i did like the hardest one so when i was training for all this my brother like had grown up and he was he was with madrascals he was racing with madrascals so sometimes i would have to go and drop him early in the morning because he was literally small small so i used to see those people ride really fast and i would be like uh This is fancy and they like ride short and they ride fast and they come back home it's done. So I used to ask Aditya like how is it how fast do you guys go like so back then daddy was fast for me. He's like do they go faster than daddy? He was like you must see. <laughs> <laughs> I was like okay. So Chiclo Cafe when back then like when they were new they used to conduct a lot of events like grand fondos and other uh, social rights and all so they once did a grand fondo where i said okay i'll come and join so i was there abiyaka was there she was very new then so we all raced i like we rode our heart out and like i, I don't remember it was 100 km like, we did it in 3 and 1/2 hours or something and we were like panting pant 3 and 1/2 hours as a group like we were drafting there right. were people and then okay like yeah. and we were like oh we are so fast this that and like finish and everything was happening and then madrascals were there my brother was there, like how did you guys do we did 3 and 1/2 he's like we came back in 235 like oh. <laughs> i said <was> like, what <laughs> did you guys also do 200 km is the like, same distance i said like, how he's like that's how fast we are i said like, okay I'll be there soon. <laughs> so that's how like it was. And then I I during when I was doing that BRM season itself I started doing local ITTs and everything like TCC would do ITTs mm. would just go and do. But it was all fun because we were I was literally not training for it but just because there was not a lot of women out there we would go right whatever effort we can and we would still win and come. So we have something like we won. We could show off we have won. So that was happening for a while. and then is when like uh, we got to know about uh, like these states and how all that happens uh, so this was 2018 2017 later Le- later okay, yeah. yeah so mm. uh, that's yeah that was 2017 later yeah yeah so okay. it all started like that like mm-hmm. cycling moving into cycling and okay yeah. okay so you started uh, participating in the ITTs that uh, yeah. uh, these guys are uh, conducting yeah, MRC TCC, TCC yeah. and uh, back then TCC and WCCG were the bigger platforms right so they used to conduct and, and then MRC came into the MRC picture came in into picture that. around 2019 or 2018 yeah yeah, yeah. okay so and then uh, when did you kind of start uh take so you were doing these initially these races mm-hmm. uh while uh, you know riding brms yeah. and stuff like that right not specifically training training for yeah, the uh, races yeah. so when did uh training for and focusing on just the racing part kind of uh, take shape okay uh so uh like um i started training for uh tonur half try mm-hmm. uh, which went pretty decent then is when i was like people told me it's a like rolling course and it's not like chennai it's going to be really hard so focus a little bit more on your cycling i so then is when i actually started like focusing on speed in cycling because to me a half half distance triathlon 80 km i can do it because i have been doing longer endurances but then my dad said no it has to be like little faster so that at least you get the same speed which you get here in pl- like flat surface 
that's how i started training for cycling and then while doing that itts were also happening everything was happening uh around 2000 like i went to first states in 2018 the same year as tonur so when i was training for that and i was doing itts there was this coach called selva kumar mm. he he would come bring his kids to the events and then he saw me lakshmi abhiyaka and all and he was like you know what you women ride really good you should come for uh, states and all that so we did not know what states how and all those things because we have always seen private races so we 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 asked him like how does it work sir what is it and then he said there will be a venue you have to come i'll explain so we went and uh, it was not nothing like private races <laughs> but okay i won't talk much about it we went and so they we we were just asked to ride like to like a master jaisa kuch like mm-hmm. four or five of us in women elite category and they said just ride it was just 10 kilometers okay <laughs> right whoever comes for second third they'll go for nationals so we literally road 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 and it was just 10 kilometers we girls did not know how to ride 10 kilometers so like me lakshmi and abhiyaka we ke- we got selected and we went for the nationals Uh, but back then like abhiyaka and lakshmi uh, were into racing they had started like that they had coaches who they were training under and uh, i think abhiyaka with her shrinath sir and lakshmi with her coach for me it, i was still like half half doing this and doing that it was too much for me on the plate like because i was doing just finishing my medical and this was there and i was not very serious back then i was just doing it for fun uh, i hadn't targeted anything as such all that was happening and then i came back and uh, when i started training for my goa triathlon for me back then my triathlons were important and this was just because i'm doing because i'm as anyways doing that right so uh, i was training for my goa triathlon and i was really working on my cycling then is when i thought oh i need to like it's like how would i say it uh, over try was in 2019 yeah 2019 yeah. Mm. so i was like enough of just going and showing up for itts you need to become a little faster like back then we used to just have this 24 km course all the time and we would be just doing 30 31 constantly that would be the thing we would be doing and then i was like i need to improve it's too much of time now and it was almost like more uh, uh, one year i had finished my medical degree and i was working so i had time so i started training uh goa triathlon never happened because i had like some personal issues so i couldn't go but cycling became favorite mm. <laughs> on that process i started cy- liking cycling more because i could uh, go with people who were faster and i found company to ride with and all that which i was not able to do earlier because my times were really off because of my internship in college so that's how it sta- slowly started moving to like just cycling from being like triathlon and everything okay. and yeah that's how the transition was okay so 2019 Uh, and late 2019 is when you kind of shifted to we are just proper cycling cycling sci- from being a triathlete who was showing up at ITTs yeah. to focusing more on cycling speed and speed cycling and yeah cycling. yeah okay so once you kind of uh, started focusing on cycling mm-hmm. right how how did the training change for mm-hmm. you and how did uh, you know it progress from there okay uh so like for me uh, i was always training under my dad like because yes he his uh, triathlon coach with yours kind everything everything that kind of training like he was telling me what to do and how to do so i was under his wings and he was giving me instructions and whatever possible i was doing and my brother because he was into sake cycling for a very long time he was guiding me in things but like i always was pretty confused venki because i like whenever i started giving too much of important to my sports my professional thing would get a hit like uh, i wouldn't be able to like i i ha- if i have to cycle if i have to go to competitions i have to take leave and then it becomes too much of a leave all the time and my people were not very happy with it so it was always fluctuant like do i want it or don't i want it or should i establish my career first and then come back to this i don't know i was not able to handle both so i would like for the period of time i'm training i would train really hard and i'll show up for event and do a decent performance and come back but then if i'm not training if i i sometimes you know if i go into that zone of like oh this is not important i've studied something else i should do that then i will just leave it and i start focusing on the other things so it was that fluctuant for me all the while uh 
my but my dad was very supportive he would be like if you want to do you do if you don't want feel like you don't do nobody's pressurizing you it it was just me who just did not know what i want for a very long time but 2020 uh, like 2019 was very wavery i would train hard for a couple of months show up for some race and like do some really amazing performance there and people would be like shocked and happy oh like she's and then i'll like go vanish for two months i will not be there because like you know so much of thinking and not knowing what to do mm. but in 2020 later like i think around may or something i was like no i i have to now i have work which is like kind of settled uh and i need to balance i'm like grown up i can do it <laughs> so then is when i properly started training initially uh like i was training with my brother and like you know we have groups inside like chennai i would ride with them i started training with uh riding with sachin sir i would say so uh, sachin chavan he's he was a part of madras girls mm. uh, before he moved to pune so i started riding with him and then he started guiding me on a lot of things and this that this that and then one day he asked me what is that you're looking for from cycling i was like uh, i mean i just want to get faster i said but then there was like getting faster is a process what is your goal I was like, good question. I'll come back to you. Mm. <laughs> so I thought, I thought. I was like, seriously, like you know, getting faster is a process which is gonna go on. But what's the target? So I was like, uh, nationals is the target, but then that's a long term target. The instant target. I was just looking at calendars, and there was this ITT which was coming up around uh, like a couple of months later after the lockdown opened up. So I went back to him and I said I want to do really good in this ITT. He's like do you have a numbers in mind? I did not have power meter and all back then last year. I said I have always been doing the best I put on put on road is like 33k average. I want to do 35k average. That's how I spoke. So he was like okay let's train. So he started helping me, guiding me and he would give me tips, he would give me workouts and everything. and i used to i still do but i used to hate indoor training i would just not do indoor training so everything was on road so he would like most of the time he would be there or the madrasal team would be there uh, they like so when the team was there he would be like your workout today is just to hang in the second position throughout the ride should not come back i'll be like okay is that a workout is can that be so hard okay i'll do it but half of the distance i'm like <laughs> i can't do it anymore those men are like really fast and for them there is no warm up there is no interval from the first pedal they put on it's hard <laughs> till the last pedal <laughs> that's how they go so i i started doing that i would often get dropped like seriously i would often get dropped but then i'll still keep rolling rolling to him like to the group to catch the group uh, and i'll catch them and they're taking a break and i'll be like hey i'm here i'm here like oh let's go like, can i get 5 minutes more please <laughs> so that's how it was but then sachin sir told me like this is how you're going to get faster trust me all the train programs all all the intervals and everything will be a later part but now to at least get to that rhythm this is how it's going to be you always have to train with somebody who's really faster than you on roads he said i was like okay so it went on for 4 5 months and all that in between the itt happened i could not get the 35 wala average thing which i thought i would but i performed really well and i was happy I was happy to see the improvement I have made over a period of time that gave me much more confidence and then is when I went again to him and said I asked you for this I couldn't attain but you know I think I'm capable of much more I just need a little bit of time I want to continue then he was like then we'll have to get into proper structured training I said sure it he said with your work because back then there was covid also he's like with your work pressure it's going to be really hard I said I'm I want to try I want to give it a go and then he was like sure so that period was very hard like i would work for 10 hours and work and come back dehydrated so he'll make sure he gives me proper training but for shorter period like just 45 minutes of hard efforts and all that i i'll do that on the trainer then is where trainer became my friend because of of work hours and all i only had trainer because i couldn't go on roads and all so that's how my like training for speed with the proper schedule started All yeah. right. So, uh, also the uh, initial period when uh, with uh, where you mentioned, you know, in two thousand nineteen and all, mm-hmm. where you were working and then, uh, you know, doing training for mm-hmm. a bit, mm-hmm. and then uh, you know focusing on work for yeah. a, a few months, and mm-hmm. then training for a, a 
few race or two mm-hmm. and then going off so that kind of seesawing um I, you kind of uh, brushed it off as something that you were not sure you know yeah. you were not clear what yeah. you want to do but i would actually put it up as something that all of us have you know go through right yeah especially when we are at uh, you know start of a career yeah uh, that is really important to yeah. kind of make sure that you are establishing yourself exactly you need not be the you know a fresher uh, in starting in a job but y- even if you change jobs yeah right exactly. you are in a new place you might have uh, had ton of experience mm-hmm. but you are in a new place you want you have to kind of establish yourself in a new place yeah. uh, even with experience that kind of thing you have to focus there right so it takes a lot of your energies exactly right yeah. but there are there are other things that you have to do but it is you know some kind of manage a little better than the others but all of us will actually go yeah, through totally that totally agree yeah so but that is that is a learning process mm-hmm. right yeah. now you have gone through that and you know what it is it is like what it was like yeah. and now you are still managing that kind of yeah. uh, workload and all that actually it's much more harder now like work wise but i am able to manage right yeah. so having that kind of having gone through those yeah. things i think will give you a perspective right you know very much these things will be there mm-hmm. that okay okay the schedule will be there like this last time i could not do it you know yeah. this way uh, along with it but now i think i can try this and you know yeah exactly that. like you know yeah. as, as you're exactly saying like yeah. because we have been through this now we have a better vision about it like things we couldn't do better learnings and so now you like multitask better i would say mm. you know what to prioritize and what can wait and all that yeah, yeah. also also you would have the uh, you will uh, also have that feeling of regret at the back of the mind once you kind of you know let go of your exactly. fitness yeah and then you will say uh last time that i kind of let go of my fitness mm-hmm. i had to work really yeah, really hard, hard to get back to go, in this yeah back. so i better not <laughs> just <laughs> not try not thinking about quitting or something like literally when after like i've come so far and like mostly all the athletes who are in their like later stages like i would say 25 plus they know they have been a little heavier at some point of time and they i think it's the same story of everyone's journey like at least in my circle so now when we are standing at this point to think of going back to that kind of body and coming back oh no i would just not i can't think of doing that all over again it's just a process like it's wonderful journey for sure but if somebody asks you would you want to repeat it you know yeah. i i am happy where i am i want to go further not backwards so we kind of like manage and make sure that we don't lose on it and lose the track yeah, yeah. exactly yeah definitely the all those learnings i think going through that process is important and also not just going through the process and forgetting about it but learn, you know taking those learnings good points and, out of it yeah, yeah like yeah. i think very like you're saying the perfect thing like we have to go through those things to be a little more mature and like in future if we if we wouldn't have gone through those things today i don't know you or me if we would be this sensible about what we want or how is it working yeah. so it's just a part of becoming much more smarter and mature i guess <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. definitely definitely in my case right i uh, i have been struggling with weight uh, almost every year okay. right so that is also the one of the reasons that you know started this podcast mm-hmm. like okay. you know this is uh, back in 2020 when i was uh, going through another of those uh, weight gain cycles mm-hmm. i was like what am i doing <laughs> you know what is going on okay. you know? so uh, this is something uh, uh, by this time i have started cycling what uh, 12 
14 years now mm-hmm. but back in 2020 when i was thinking about this I was like i've been doing this for 12 13 years now and every year uh, after the initial mm-hmm. weight loss from coming from 92 to uh, i've seen your pictures yeah, yes yeah <laughs> 66 was my lowest weight okay. and uh, uh, now we about i i maintain about 69 70 mm-hmm. but a lo- lot of times i it goes to like 74 okay. and all that and i feel horrible Right. I would like to ask you a question here. Yeah. So when you were at the lowest of your weight, yeah. how was your like performance? Like did that lowest point was your race weight or you felt weak in that period of time? No, low- lowest point uh, was my race weight. Okay. Because the first time I hit 66 was <laughs> back in 2011 when t- uh, for my first tfm okay tour okay. of nail greece yeah. i was riding my fixie i rode stupid amount of uh, <laughs> miles uh, and uh, i just lost weight i okay. didn't do anything no, special no nothing nothing nothing, just nothing. Kept, i hmm? just uh, kept riding kept ri- uh, till then till may 2011 i was just most of mostly a weekend warrior mm-hmm. i was commuting to work and mm-hmm. then uh, going on rides on Only the weekend on the weekends and then once i signed up for tfn in 2011 mm-hmm. that's when i said okay this is a serious business i need to ride yeah. more i think right? only when we register for something is when our brain starts working oh yeah. now we have to work harder yeah so riding uh, the prospect of riding 900 kilometers in a week and in those hills <laughs> yeah was scary i know and uh, Uh, to add to that i told myself this is the only bike i have the fixed gear mm-hmm. bike and i'm going to do it on that mm-hmm. so I, i as if it is not difficult enough i you had to r- you were like <laughs> thanki you can take it bring it on bring this <laughs> a fixie for sure <laughs> yeah so i was uh, i was so scared that i rode like uh, 10000 kilometers uh, in some 6 months or something okay. like that and as a part of training for, as a part of training for okay. the TFN okay. and i uh, during those 6 months i lost i was maintaining around 78 mm-hmm. 76 the initial sp- uh, spurt of lo- weight loss was from 92 to 76 mm-hmm. and then when i was training for uh, TFN in 2011 that is when the next uh weight the, loss happened okay. from 76 to 78 i was maintaining mm-hmm. so from 78 to 66 that is another 12 kilos the next batch of weight yeah, loss <laughs> the next batch of weight loss happened and that was huge were you training a lot on the hills or the, yeah because i was i i know that it huh. was like woody have, and all that right that's what you right? have to do okay so i was doing a lot of nandi hills uh. i actually went to 2010 uh, 2011 i went to woody in Train. may fixie uh fixie <laughs> to test you know what <laughs> oh uh, if i could climb to you know yeah. woody because that's the queen stage yeah thankfully that that year it was no it was from the gudulur side mm-hmm. not the kalahati side okay. but still i wanted to try the kalahati side and one first day one we went and tried i could not do it and day two we we climbed gudulur side it was it, it was, was easy peasy when it comes <laughs> to the kalahati yeah, i have already done a harder section before i can do it perfect <laughs> so uh, it was so that was uh you know how kind of uh, my training mm-hmm. went and i did it but i don't know why we are talking about me no i was i got excited <laughs> no i wanted to know <laughs> so like how did your tfn got over like it was amazing oh it was brilliant it was okay. brilliant it was uh, one of my one of the best experiences mm-hmm. um, i would say in my cycling career and it kind of changed my cycling and my life in a mm-hmm. in a very positive way okay. i would i would say uh, because after that, that you know that is when i actually saw how actually you know road cycling you mm-hmm. know i met people like rajesh nair and uh-huh. all these like fancy fancy bikes <laughs> and actually what is hydration what is cadence like you feel like this child in a candy store like going exactly. huh? <laughs> wow wow <laughs> so all i knew was stupid riding and i was just going Riding going as the... hard as i can on yeah. that fixie bike but when i saw all that i was like wow this is something you know there, mm-hmm. there is so much to learn yeah. rather okay. than just riding mm-hmm. so that is when actually you know 
coming back and then started uh, actual uh, my uh, teammates actually forced a road bike on to me and then i started training <laughs> then is when your pose started becoming lesser lesser <laughs> lesser and lighter and lighter yeah but uh, uh, we were talking about weight right yeah so 66 was my race weight okay yeah i think that is when we how we got into tfn discussion yeah. but no, so uh, i will tell to all the viewers this is a little bit about venki in today's <laughs> podcast if you guys had not known this before <laughs> <laughs> but yeah 66 was always my race weight and whenever there is a race like mm-hmm. nandi hill mm-hmm. nandi race or, or something like that i would I aspire to get into 66. Okay. But 66 is being race weight is actually quite difficult to, to stay there. To maintain and sustain it. Yeah. yeah totally understandable. But 68 is usually some something 68 69 is something Which I you can, can stand. Yeah. Okay. I can kind of maintain without mm-hmm. without having to kill myself or stop myself from, from eating biryani <laughs> or <okay. laughs> I get it. So like even for me like talking about weight for me to lose weight it's really hard. I think it's just in my genes like Uh, my bones are a little more denser uh so right now whatever weight i am it's like the lightest i have been uh and i know the journey is really hard like for some people they can really quick drop weight and they gain weight for me it's not like that it takes a huge amount of time to drop even 1 kg but if i could drop that i will uh, like stay the same way for like quite some decent time mm-hmm. so i totally understand how hard it is yeah, to yeah, lose so weight it is and i I, you know stupid me i uh, as if it is not hard enough to do it once i <laughs> tend to do it every year <laughs> because i gain uh, uh, you know i get to 74 and stuff like yeah. that almost every year but more now i am trying to maintain last couple of mm-hmm. years like uh, last year i did not go to 74 okay. thankfully i stopped at 70 <laughs> even now i am yeah. at 70 69 70 is mm-hmm. what i'm trying to maintain but it is very important to have those thresholds exactly to only saying okay you are breaching that yeah you are just cat on the wall don't <laughs> fall that side come start coming back the other side yeah, yeah. yeah i think it's all that's why we call off seasons like you put on some weight so that it gives you motivation to get back on the track yeah, yeah. yeah. for even for off season we have to have those threshold like limits not beyond that okay yeah. <laughs> just keep not it like, so after the last nationals we had uh I came back and then my coach was like you know chill just chill do whatever you want as they cook it and I was like uh, having fun and I started gaining a little bit of weight and I was like coach I'm gaining weight and then they say it's okay you can but just remember one thing don't gain so much weight that I look at you and I'll be like no I can't train you just go back <laughs> so, so it should be into the limits I'm like okay it's like you can see ice cream but you can't eat it <laughs> it's just like that <laughs> like, i was like okay fine <laughs> i'll do it so i'm like i used to love milk like anything like yeah. i need milk at least twice a day three times is a bonus so the first thing when i started cycling and uh, i started becoming fitter i would say my coach was like stop your milk i was like but why milk is strength milk is vitamin d milk is calcium he was like for a lot of people uh, milk is the game changer i was like okay i would try and then i literally like it became from two glasses a day to one glass a day we are north indian so for our glasses like this big <laughs> <laughs> so like one glass a day i saw the difference and then like after a month he was like cut it off you can take curd and everything but just don't take milk and it literally worked wonder for me like all that weight drop which happened was like after cutting off the milk hmm. i was like oh okay so like but then he but because he knows i love milk he was like you can have milk here and there sometimes but make sure you don't go, go back to the habits of having it twice a day and all that thing and then me being a medical student it started being itchy i was like if i stop milk because i'm a pure vegetarian where do i get my like nutrition from and i was researching researching so then is when i found out like milk actually till you're becoming like a like for boys say 18 or 19 for girls say 16 or 17 till your growing ages is still uh, it's still then when your maximum absorption of vitamin d and calcium happens through milk after that it's just a supplementary thing you're taking so it literally like people who think oh if you don't take milk where is what we are going to get from it for us like say about 25 literally just does not happen because it's just anything other you're taking and the absorption part of it is very minor so yeah 
that's so stop it. stopping milk yeah, actually a lot of people um, i hear about this uh, you know more so vegans mm-hmm. by, you know cutting out milk and milk products mm-hmm. seems to uh, help a lot of lot in the recovery process yeah. is what uh, because milk of... plays around with lot of people gut that, mm-hmm. that's one major thing like right. they never would realize but all the gut issues they have been having could mm. have been because of milk and milk products okay for a very long time yeah. i i know a lot of athletes like vegan athletes who stopped milk and like or chose alternative milks like plant based milk and their guts have never been better right. so obviously once your gut is better your performance starts improving yeah So, so do you uh, do alternate milk or anything not like really. that? Not no, really. No, no. I just But take curd. Curd. And stuff. curd. Yeah. I take curd. Okay. Yeah, that's about it. Nice, nice. So now coming to the training for national, uh, you know, uh, how did the state selections and nationals or any you know the last time go for you? Okay. Uh, so in the last year, twenty twenty one, we had. two nationals one mm. which was supposed to be compensated for the 2020, 2020 which did not happen it was in bombay and this one was in pehoha haryana uh so like if i had to say my i have been to this was my uh first second third nationals i went to so if i had to like put it down this was the only nationals i have ever trained and like properly focused and just not like a play thing and i've gone and it was good so i came third in the states they kept it in coimbatore uh I, like i couldn't like my target was to at least get second because abhi ka was there so mm-hmm. i couldn't do it like me and bindia bindia came second and i was like few seconds behind her so i couldn't do the itt and uh, like we very well knew like i was not at the stage where i can do like a strong itt in national so i it was okay but uh, i have I uh, like even when I started cycling back in 2019 I was I didn't tell you this I was shit scared of road races like riding in bunch would scare me out I would not do it so I have never done road races before but riding with mad rascals and people constantly telling like if you ride in the men bunch actually road races are easy doing MRC road races I thought okay fine I was super excited for road race this time like even back then when we used to go for nationals they would give my name for road race abhi aka would do it i'll be like no i'm not doing it i'll just do itt and i'll come back that's all i will do uh, but this time i was like you know what i want to do road race let's see how it is so we went everybody was training so itt i helped india i helped abhi aka do their thing and it went well second day was ttt like we did really amazing performance like we clocked like some 40 point something average and that was wonderful like we were literally like seconds away from top 3 though even we were a little like low in the position but like you timing wise finished seven times yeah we yeah. finished seven but timing wise it was really Very good close. The, yeah. yeah so that was the thing and we were so Whereas happy everything was like within seconds seconds ka yeah. changes mm-hmm. yeah exactly that was the thing and we were it's it's it was about oh like we are there it's just like you know we are at least at the same level because before that we never had ttt team itself right. like i remember 2000 17 or 18 when we went for the nationals we just it was just me abhiyaka and lakshmi we were just three people and it was all over the place and everything so that went pretty well and road race uh like was amazing so we i this was the first first road race i was asking abhiramiyaka like how it is she was telling me and she was like you know what we'll talk a lot everything would be there but when you are in the race it's your game you have to think about yourself first we'll be there and i get nervous i get anxiety i like anxiety like i have att- anxiety attacks so we were riding and we were constantly on the right of the peloton because apparently tamil nadu girls have never been in the front and then like vn singh he was like oh tamil nadu girls you're in the front come on come on go 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 and all that like we railways were there we were here and all that it was good so like there were constant attacks because it was a rolling course hmm. we couldn't do break away like did we have the legs yes did we try yes but it was just because every time we did the break away on the up rolling down everybody was coming and catching back exactly like how it was happening for men elite there was no break away at all so like every time we were the doing the course is not suited for for break away it's like yeah. yeah you can literally see like what's happening in the front so you can't like like on turns also you can't skip and go you will be in people's eye people will know that you're there right. 
so like every time we were doing it we tried two to three times the railway girls would come and like close you up or they would target you would not let you go so till the last that was happening there were like two to three crashes and we were so happy i remember like that was the last lap it was just two kilometers to the go and i turned and i was doing the stupidity because i haven't ridden road races because i was right in the front okay and every time i'm there i would turn i'd like are you girls here abhi i was like look forward you're going to fall down <laughs> so that, i was doing that constantly because i was like where is my team where is my team uh, every time there is a crash girls are screaming is like bindi is there abhi is there oh they are there <laughs> keep going because we knew we are not going to win in the sprint at least we fringe finish together all three of us finish together because Because Tamil Nadu women before, like, uh, they like how many people would go in would not come out. Like they won't be in the list. Somebody would be in the crash or somebody would be in the DNF. So we were so excited two kilometers before the finish. Like we all are there, yay, yay, yay! And then like, uh, we were just discussing like, do we have the legs? Can we at least try to sprint with the railways? And the other girls were like, yeah, sure. So we all started sprinting, and boom, there was a crash right in front of me. I was like in the front. I literally, I never knew I had such great bike handling skills. Okay, I literally bunny hopped on the right. Wow. I was like, did I just do it? I was like, wow. I was like, and then Abhi Akha got scared. She was like, Nandini, are you okay? I was like, I'm fine. I was just like, go, 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 go. So there were like these two girls who went in the front, and there is this crash. They have finished. So we all like, there's this bunch of I think six, seven girls who are going to the finish, and then like we all were there, and we were like. We started. I think we had we had a very overwhelming reaction because we all finished after all that chaos, like ambulance <laughs> running and all that and everything. So uh, we and then the name list came and then we all were there in the finish thing and it was super exciting. Like, I think the three of us were like in the top fifteen in the road race. It was like it was for us. It was great. Nice. Yeah. You also you know. experienced your first bunny hop <laughs> yeah. i think i have some good skills i'm going to try that on ecr when i go back that race i don't know if i could say like a training wise yes it gave me like uh because of the road uh, like terrain and everything if i hadn't trained so hard i wouldn't have been able to hold up in the front all right. through like yeah. training matters is when i realized that and yeah, definitely yeah, yeah so that was one thing and uh, like uh, bike handling wise also that road race gave me huge confidence i i would say i if i learned something and came back from there was like you know it's just you stopping yourself from doing a lot of things because you think you can't but you might be good at it so mm. after that when i came here i was like i started doing more road races and i started doing this stunts of like when i'm riding with my like peer friends in back in chennai like sanjeev michael and everybody i try chasing them i try cutting them off and all is like hey <laughs> i like i'm trying new things i'm training for national road race right. yeah they were always teasing me and because they they're boys right they know that i've started like in this kind of racing so they would want to do it with me they were like i'm going to go you need to come and catch me i was like i will come i can't catch them but i would try i would just go there <laughs> it's like that it's like super fun yeah nice yeah. you know that that is important right unless you uh, go and do it yeah. you don't know what yeah exactly you know, what you will learn or what you won't learn mm-hmm. so whether you will survive or not yeah. you will we won't know on un- till you go and try it yeah and uh, although you were apprehensive of road racing which all of us should be yeah. because it is a dangerous it's, thing it's a kind right? of very dangerous nasty uh, yeah, yeah. thing so out there road racing bunch uh, bunch sprinting and all that is not for everyone yeah. but um, it is important to kind of put yourself out there and learn yeah uh, from that experience yeah, yeah, which, exactly. which is uh, which you came out uh, with the b- new bunny hopping skills <laughs> <laughs> exactly so, that's like good. i still remember after the race like my team everybody was making so much fun of me like imad was recording is like what did you just do there i was like save myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know when you are in a situation like that you, you yeah. probably come up with survival your, instincts yeah, survival instincts right <laughs> exactly yeah awesome awesome that was uh, you know nationals experience yeah. right so what uh, what now what are your goals uh, for this year coming uh, in this year i am like Uh, so last year like the nationals in haryana it was like a open platform for me my coach said we are not ready for anything now but we have started our journey so because i was skeptical in doing the road race he really mentored me and like 
prepared me mentally to go and do it because my coach loves road racing so he, and he was pretty happy with my performance and everything and then he said you know what just don't get scared of anything you have nothing to lose this year go do whatever you want even if you fall you'll recover and then we'll start training it's fine so that gave me a confidence i did a lot of things and came back and took a while like like took december off and then january i was pretty much more serious i i was like Uh, i need to train smart and there has to be an objective i can't just go to nationals for the sake of going or i got selected it should be the goal so, so sat down jotted down my points for me i always have to like i need to see it to believe it so even for me if it's a personal goal i'll have to put it down like pros and cons compare and i do that kind of homework a lot anything it, if i can analyze it i trust it if i can't i cannot is the medical Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah if i have reports in my hand is when i can diagnose you it's something like that yeah. so i wrote down everything like what i'm ready to sacrifice this year to attain this goal say if nationals is my goal what and all will be put at risk what and all i'll have to lose i i put it down everything and then um but still like i took a long time like do i really want it am i ready to you know put a lot of things back and focus on it still the craving was much more so i i decided let me do this let me go for it and i sat down with my father and i said i know i'm like a little older but i need one year just give me one year that if i'm not able to do things which i want to do post that i'll focus on like my work side properly but can i have this one year where i want to do this and not just my work because you would have doctor friends you know all the doctors they work at least double shift oh, yeah, yeah. like they at least work in two places like alternate shifts right. but i don't do that mm. uh, i cannot do that so that's one thing i said like that's one thing like me just working one shift it's it's like a big thing for all all the doctors would be like oh, you just working one shift that's how the reaction is so uh, that was everything when i worked out and i said no i need to do this and i sat down with my coach and spoke i i said but who is like uh it would be a lot more harder because again your profession you're not in a like all the works are really hard everybody who works and trains like it's something different but for you it's a little different thing because you're you're mentally engaged you're physically engaged and you're like it's a lot of energy you need to get as i want to give it a go he said sure so uh now when i started training it's is it hard it's really hard for me like sometimes i just come back home and i pass out and even at work sometimes like i'm just not there physically because you know it's really hard on the body and everything but it keeps keeps me going because there is this target that i've set my mind on and i need to and like i know a lot of things are on stake like it's not that like would i want to be on top 3 in nationals this year yes for sure but if even i'm not even if i attain the target i want to i can happily pursue it further so that's that one year i've asked my parents or myself for like if like that thing happens like if i'm able to attain certain par numbers or if i'm happy with my performance in nationals i would be satisfied i would like look more forward towards it so that's kind of the thing mm. yeah yeah it is important right it yeah. is <clears throat> it is important to kind of have that clarity yes as exactly in what are you uh, pursuing mm. and what exactly are you pursuing yeah. and what are you letting go exactly because of you yeah. know pursuing it is like this right you, if you are uh, eating biryani Uh, you know you are missing out you need to out. change your example because i don't know how biryani eating feels like <laughs> you don't know so let's uh, let's uh, ta- talk about what is your favorite uh, dish <laughs> you know, or whatever right yeah. you know, let's let's scrap the biryani part okay <laughs> choice a versus choice b yeah. right you are if you are choosing one thing you are letting go of lot of other things exactly right yeah it is uh, it is not just food or anything anything if you are uh, choosing one thing you are saying yeah. no to if you are saying yes to one thing you are yeah. saying no to lot of other things exactly. right so uh, is this one thing that, that you are saying yeah. yes to that important that you are willing to say no to a all lot the of other, other things, things yeah right? is it like is the 
thirst or is the like urge to get that so important that you're ready to neglect all of that right. that's a tough choice like you have to make you have to think twice like as you said food would be the least of it like yeah. for example for me like working wise like sometimes i would just say if they put me in early morning shift i would just say no i cannot i have to train and i had had sometimes like small clashes at work but on a bigger picture they are very understanding my management is very understanding so it's smooth so i like literally don't have a social circle because of this and like my friends you need to have it's just not your family like your friends and everybody they need to be understanding like because at the end of the day when you're frustrated or if you fail you those are the people you go back to and they have to understand wh- where you're coming from what do you want in life so they understand that i'm not able to as much socially available as i like i used to be before and they respect that that has to be there parents need to understand because i stay with my parents obviously mom has certain demands dad is super cool because he knows he does the same thing so he knows brother family time i'm not able to give as much support or as much time to my mom as much she would expect because you know like grown up daughter have to help out and all that but she understands she gives me sometimes she gets frustrated like but then because all three of us are liking to sports she's like how much will i do so yeah, right, yeah. so but then on a bigger picture she understands and like she's okay with it she i think got used to it <laughs> <laughs> she has no choice yeah, now <laughs> exactly so it's just that like exactly what you said is it so much work that you're ready to sacrifice so much so many things and if you are sacrificing so many things it better be that you're putting your 100% in that and not a like mediocre work you're doing right. so i just cannot do a mediocre work like it has to be 100% i think again it comes from my medical background like yeah, i right. can't do half surgery or i can't do half sutures <laughs> so it's the same way like if i go i go fully in yeah so yeah excellent excellent so what um, you know, like you said right you, it is not the being a medico and mm. you know in emergency ward and yeah. stuff like that it is not something that you can quite relax right you have to be present yeah. uh, and you have to be more more or less be on your feet yeah like more aware like more, you have to yeah. think you yeah. have to be present more yeah. you know mentally and yeah. physically yeah it's not uh, so you can't be like not just be absent minded or yeah, anything like that it you know yeah. some of us can get away with that thing, you <laughs> know <laughs> yeah we cannot it's yeah, but thing. you cannot so uh, how do you manage uh, your recovery and stuff like that mm-hmm. because uh, workouts and you know managing training and yeah. this is um, uh, i think it's uh, uh, like perfectly uh, you know recovery is important but it's also to do with like what your body is capable of handling and what your body can get used to so for me when i started training really hard like say after the last nationals it was so hard for me like workouts became harder a little longer and like they became twice a day like i've been training twice a day for what from january now so in hospital half of the time i would be super drowsy like i obviously right and if i'm put in morning shift oh god they will like <laughs> <laughs> sisters would be like ma'am night shift parting like like just came <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it, it's like that but then uh, proper nutrition and uh, like proper hydration it it's a very small part of your bigger training program but it works magic i was not this person who would like make sure that i gulp down 3 to 4 liters of water, of water a day or i was not this person person like who would eat properly because on the run whatever we get and so we have a mcdonald's next to our hospital <laughs> i don't have to say anything more <laughs> it's understood so that was the routine but then i was like no no nothing happening everything that was changed from january so like right now what i do is i think my body got a little bit used to the stress and my coach makes sure that i have this rest so if my stress score or something is going beyond the chart in spite of not training so hard he still gives me rest day because he said body needs rest and it's not like you are in a seat job again you are right. moving around so that that's one thing second thing is i constantly keep hydrating myself even at work like i make sure i have my bottle always around so that's one thing i do 
and food wise also i become a little more self aware self conscious even it before i used to feel shy i would say or i would i would be like oh what would people say if i take breaks and go eat something and come out that's not what we do but now again because priority yeah. i started doing that i take snacks multiple snacks like i take fruits or, or dry fruits or seeds and then i keep eating at equal intervals i eat more clean now so yeah that's how i i take care of recovery and uh, uh i make sure like whenever i get time i stretch and at work that's so much i can do mm. and sometimes luckily it's easier like the day is easy it's not much chaos in er then you get to sit and relax and okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, talking of eating cleaning, mm-hmm. is this something that you can share uh, a few examples uh, yeah. for the audience? Yeah, so uh like I would say take my example because I know myself best. Yeah. Uh so initially like till last year when I was doing it would be like any food like oh you're hungry whatever is at home like rice curry and everything there's no harm in eating it's just my body works that way. So now I've started the McD at home. <laughs> sure. you had to bring it up <laughs> so yeah make the because it's easy and all that thing um now what changes i've made is before like the food was typical north indian food if my mom is making parathas or poha or idli whatever like pure carbs it, that's what we used to have but like now for breakfast i've swapped that i would just have overnight soaked oats with fresh fruits or smoothies with protein that would be the breakfast now mid noon i take like fruits or something whatever possible or just seeds or something that would go lunch one big change i made is my lunch before i it used to be chapati and rice and all those stuff i mean i was not gaining weight with that it was okay but i wasn't losing either it was just like plateaued over there mm. so i swapped it with salads and sprouts that's what i've been eating like for a couple of months and to me it has made a huge difference like it's much more cleaner and i feel the same like it's full it makes me like keep full for longer and, uh, and there is no that uh, of post lunch dip in energy drowsiness exactly. and all that because salads and sprouts are slow releasing right so they keep you full kind of till later mm-hmm. and they don't have the extra unnecessary carbs or whatever right. so that that's working wonders for me like performance wise uh, like weight loss wise it's helping me really well and but i do my dinners properly like i go back home and whatever is at home even if it's rice or chapati or whatever it is i eat that like dinners are, i don't do anything mm. that's whatever is at home i'll eat it and uh, all the junks i've avoided i don't remember the last time i had a pizza <laughs> <laughs> you can have one tomorrow after the race. yes yes for sure <laughs> So no, yeah. if your coach permits that is. I don't think you'll say anything. <laughs> Or I probably I would not tell him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, great. So uh in terms of uh, you know when you are doing like two a day kind of thing, right? Yeah. So how do you um how do you make sure that you are properly fueled for the workouts? Yeah. So uh like morning if uh i'm doing like hard intervals i take this uh, bars or like a banana i make sure i eat a banana before i go and if it's a longer ride i would take like couple of spoons of my overnight soaked oats i'll dip that in banana and go i'll always carry bars sometimes i make it at home sometimes i just buy the market ones i'll do that and then for the morning ride that's mandatory evenings when i go to the gym mostly it's gym for me in the evenings and uh, I have no shame or I have no fear of hiding my workouts. I tell everything up front. So like evenings it's like if five days a week I work out, three days it's gyms and two day two days it's ride. So for the gyms I like mostly like to keep it light. For me, like I can't eat something and then lift weights or stretch. It just like I feel tight here. Right. So I can't do that. So for gym for me it will be mostly like liquid. I might sometime take like uh, some carb drink or I might like take uh, say what a juice or something. I might take protein shake. It helps like I keep sipping and working out and then I feel there is something but it's not like bloating me. So that's for gym. And if I have cycling in the evening, I very well eat like I'll take some banana or I'll take another energy bar or something. that's how i like that keeps me going because like if i go for morning shift like if i'm having 7 to 2 work i would come i'll finish my workout before that and 
I'm always late to work in the morning because of my cycling. <laughs> I only reach 7.30. How much ever I try, it'll be only 7.30. So I come back, have my lunch a little later. So uh, like 3 o'clock and I go to gym by 5. So it gives me enough energy. And then if I do like drink something, I'm totally good with that. Awesome. Yeah. So if you have a 7 o'clock shift and stuff, you have to wake up like 4.35 yeah. and then get the workout done. Yeah, so when go. I have morning shifts, it's mostly indoors I do. Mm-hmm. Like it's easier, no? You just get right. up, get ready and sit on the trainer. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's it's convenient, time saving. Yeah. Uh, yeah trying like, to get the workout done. For me, done because I, in Chennai, I stay in Velacheri and all the rides happen on ECR side. So if I have to go ride with the group or even if I have to go do my workout on ECR road, I literally have to travel 12 kilometers by car because it's early in the morning and I have to go alone. And I think I'm not that confident yet to like travel 4.30 alone in the road. And so yeah. I have to go by car and come by car. It's it's a lot of time consuming thing for me. So I prefer indoors yeah. when I'm like in the morning shifts. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, mm. awesome. Yeah, this has been fantastic uh, chat, uh, Nandini. Thank you. Uh, and now to kind of conclude the session, mm-hmm. what are some of the tips that you would give working athletes and working men, women to do well at sport and uh, work and uh, life? Yes. <laughs> so I'm not yet there to give advice because everybody is much more experienced and like knowledgeable than me but what i would like to say is um uh to choose something out of a regular schedule is hard and you have already taken that first step like let it be cycling running or any form of sport the first step has always like already been taken so never ever think twice on it oh should i quit and then get back to the daily routine of getting up going to work no, it's it's like a beautiful life when you start working out. And I'm totally telling it to you off like my personal experience. I know how it feels when you don't work out. And the difference we all know, right? So all I know it's a little harder than a very basic lifestyle. It's a little uh, off. Like you might think, oh, we are wasting so much of... I wouldn't say wasting. It's a wrong word. We're investing so much of money on this when the friends of our own age are taking vacations and their money is going into much more things but at the end it's your personal happiness if you can go back to sleep happy thinking oh i did this it gives you happiness and you wake up wanting to do it again then that's your answer so that's about something choosing sports and on advice basis basically like specifically for cycling i would say uh like it's it's a very small community and as much as we can spread knowledge or like just the feeling of oneness it would be great like it's i do a favor for you and you do it for somebody else and the chain link follows up that's about it like we are very small community knitted together as much of help we can be as much we can spread knowledge like people would definitely come and ask you on instagram like hey venki can you help me with this or that i get a lot of requests to like asking like what bike how did you get it or like how did you get your sponsorships and and i don't feel like i have to hide something or uh, i should not tell them i openly say like when i bought my tt bike like uh that's a recent incident i don't know like hundreds of people asked me how did you bring it down during covid i was ready to explain like because if we keep it to ourselves those people are never not gonna know yeah, and yeah. yeah so like when people ask me how did you get your uh, fast and upper any sponsorship what did you do i'm like you just have to do this this is and if it's in my hands if i can help them if i can tell somebody like hey this is athlete you would want to know i just go and tell so it's just the small small helps which come back to you later i it's it there's nothing in being selfish or because at the end of the day it like you all are together so and true yeah, yeah. i don't know how to put it in words I, no no <laughs> see because uh, uh you know it's sharing uh, I think, you know, you put it as uh, sharing, which is very important. Yeah. And also it is like uh, passing on a torch. Right? Exactly. Like you the baton. In- yeah. Okay. You, you, you pass on to, you know, help someone. They will help someone. Yeah. It is like, you know, it, it goes on. That's how it, yeah. the whole thing gets lit up. Like if you have a torch just in front of your house, it's not going to light up the whole area. Yeah. And by lighting that, it's not that yours is going to go off. It's exactly. just a bigger brighter. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You just by lighting another candle, you are not going to, to yeah. burn out any any sooner than yeah. you already are. Exactly. Right. So you are actually 
passing on the uh, light to others yeah. you know other areas so it is always a good thing you know if you are able in a position to help someone yeah do it yeah exactly uh, and especially for women i know like we all have a lot of commitments we have to multitask uh, like just not the married women but pe- women who are working or women who are taking care of other stuff and everything uh, i know it's really hard but to take out a little bit of time for yourself you just have to do it because nobody else is going to do it for you and all the course which we keep running around saying oh we have to do this that everything can wait and like as i i tell it multiple times but it's so strong that i feel like saying it again down the lane 10 years back 10 years down the lane when you turn back and see everything would be the same but if you would have started doing something for yourself that's what's going to take you further so just don't think twice spend some time for you it it's what is going to stay in the end yeah awesome awesome yeah. great great words of advice thank, thank you, you so much and uh, thank you for taking the time and uh, thank you sharing so your much experience. to you yeah i was like the last time we came in and i i was like looking forward to i i know this like i i t t tomorrow but then i was telling papa papa there is this interview today is you have i t t also said, yeah i know but i have been waiting for this interview for so long <laughs> yeah <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Thank you Thank so much, Venki. And all yeah. the best for your future goals. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you. That was my conversation with Dr. Nandini Sharma. I hope you enjoyed that. If you are enjoying these podcasts and are finding them useful, please consider subscribing to the channel and supporting the podcast. It really helps. Thanks again for your continuous support. See you next week with another guest. Thank you.